we'll start, we'll start over. My name is Jen Nisit. You guys, I am so excited to be here tonight with you, and I am blessed to be with my beautiful daughter who's helping. She helped put together this presentation for you, and she'll be um, hanging around after to answer any questions you guys have. I basically have, I have a little bit of a prepared talk for you guys. I'm going to talk about preventing injuries as a runner. And I have a few different hats. Ta-da! So I'm basically coming at you guys tonight wearing three different hats. First of all, I'm a runner. <laughs> and I have been, like, from the age of seven. So I ran through with my parents running fun runs and getting my medals early on and getting addicted. I ran through junior high and high school. It helped pave my way through college. And after that, I had a family with four beautiful children who really keep us running <laughs> and um, have gone on to train for four marathons and complete three because of some injuries that I suffered with. So I have some personal experience as a runner who's overcome some injuries. I also am a physical therapist. And I have been so for about 18 years. I hate to say that out loud. <laughs> um, I practice right around the corner at Hands On Physical Therapy in Menor. It's an outpatient physical therapy practice. My specialty is treating spine patients, neck and back, but we treat all patients, and lots of runners, actually. Um, and I also come to you tonight as a health and fitness coach for uh, Team Beachbody, so maybe you have heard of them. That has been a nice segue into what I do as a physical therapist in healthcare to helping people reach their health and fitness goals and wellness. So, my husband and I, as health and fitness coaches, we have started Team NISIT. That is, that is uh, our health and fitness coaching and we kind of branded ourselves that way to help those, our family and friends, reach their health and fitness and running goals. Husband also is a very credentialed track and field runner himself and coach. He actually coaches men or high school with um, Bill Dennison. So thank you to the Dennisons for having us here tonight. And we're going to talk about staying healthy and preventing injuries as runners. So you guys know, for one thing, I'm proud of all of you that are here and showing up as runners to try to be healthy, right? Our country is plagued right now. It's an epidemic, the disease that is overtaking. Diabetes, heart disease, cancer, stroke, dementia, it goes on and on. You, we have to do something, we have to try to be healthy. And running is good for the mind, body, and soul. <laughs> so I'm speaking to the choir, but congratulations for being here and for you know, trying to take care of your health. Tonight I'm going to go over five tips that I have found important to stay healthy as a runner. We're going to talk about shoes and then a little, and then I'm going to turn that over to the experts here at the store to help you. We're going to talk about smart training and what that means. We'll also talk about proper nutrition, fueling your body for the performance, strengthening and stretching. So what should you be wearing? Well, that depends. It depends on a lot. And I can talk as a runner, I can talk as a physical therapist, but basically, without looking at your foot, it's hard to know. So what we would do is we would take a look at your foot. You basically have three different foot types. You either have a high arch and a supinated foot, you have a low arch or a pronated foot, or you're kind of neutral. And the shoe that you need depends on your foot type. If you have a real high arch, you tend to strike real hard on the front of your foot and you need a cushion shoe. Those runners also can, can do fairly nicely as a barefoot runner or a very minimalist shoe. Um, if you have a very low arch and a very flexible foot, you need control. You need the shoe that has the, thing, the built up arch support. So that would be um, the shoe they would put you in. If you have a neutral foot, so neither high nor low, you can do fairly well in just a traditional neutral shoe. Maybe even a minimalist or a cushion style shoe. But a proper assessment is important. 
if you don't have the proper shoe, you will end up, especially as your mileage goes up, getting injured. So how do you train smart? Well, for one thing, you can follow a plan and you can have a coach. That helps for sure, and it sounds like you guys have some of that. Um, basically, what we recommend for smart running is not to increase your mileage more than 10 to 15 percent per week. So a slow, a slow transition up. Um, take a day off when your body feels like it needs it. I have learned that I cannot run five days a week. I will get hurt. <laughs> So you, need, you start listening to your body, and really, there, there isn't much pain that is okay to run through. Like, soreness is one thing, but pain is not. So listen to your body and rest. And the other thing that is sometimes a little bit difficult for strict runners to understand is that cross-training is very important. <laughs> and I did not do this for years, because I was a runner, and that's what I did. And uh, as you get a little bit older, you, your body starts to demand, really, that you take time to stretch and to strengthen to really prevent injury. So that's actually cross-training makes you faster and stronger. You can run less if you want to <laughs> and be faster if you cross-train, okay? This is a big topic. <laughs> so, eating clean is not only eating vegetables. However, this is, for one thing, I will say I'm not an expert at all. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just a mom with kids who decided like my family was starting to face these diseases, I was getting angry. And I'm like, what can I do? Like, what can we have to be able to do something? So I just started to learn and research. And so what I know is what I'm learning, and I'm not a nutritionist, so I'll just clarify with that. This is what I know, this is what runners need. You need antioxidants, which help fight free radicals, keep your cells healthy. And I did learn that we break that down a little bit more while we run, so you need more antioxidants as a runner. Phytonutrients are those good nutrients that come from our plant-based foods. We need healthy fats, and this is a big shift and a big adjustment for a lot of people. We have learned to like fear fat, and actually what research is showing that for endurance athletes, healthy fats, coconut oil, avocado oil, are, they are good healthy fats are actually gonna help you burn your fuel longer than the carbohydrate loading that we used to do. So healthy fats are important for runners and actually will help you um, with your endurance runs. Lean proteins, we'll talk a little more about that. Whole grains as opposed to white grain, white flour, white bread, and then your vitamins and minerals. So this is what we need to fuel our body. So how do you get that? Lots of ways, but simply, these are my 10 favorite foods for runners. Nuts, almonds are very good. Eggs, you guys can read. Sweet potatoes, um, dark chocolate. <laughs> right? These are good foods. Yogurt, good for the, the, um, the gut health, which is the gateway to the body, right? Is so these, kind? sorry? What kind of yogurt? Greek Actually, version. Greek yogurt. So if you look at some, of the traditional yogurts, they're very high in sugar. So I get Greek yogurt and I add berries, even a little vanilla. Vanilla is kind of a, like pure vanilla, you know, is a free kind of free flavoring. So that's a nice way to, that's what I put in my Greek yogurt. The other thing I do with Greek yogurt is a teaspoon of like almond butter or organic peanut butter and bananas cut up. It's delicious. <laughs> so there's my recipe. Okay, so that's the food that you need to fuel your body. You need to consider, you guys, that your body is that machine. And if you're gonna try to run and, and maximize your potential, you have to feed it the right fuel. This is not what we need to be feeding our 
Now, okay, 80-20, you can, you know, every once in a while you can have, I mean, I used to feel like I could eat whatever I wanted to. I was a runner, but that's not the case. And you won't perform at your best if you feed your body. The, the high fructose corn syrup, the sugars, the processed foods, the fried food, the fast foods, okay? It's a mindset shift to start thinking about food to fuel your body, not your emotions. Many of us do that. Okay, so we're going to talk about strength training next. There's a lot to talk about here, but I'm going to basically talk about my five favorite muscle groups to strengthen as runners, okay? We need to work our core, and our core, and now I have my physical therapy hat on. <laughs> um, we are, your core is your whole center, right? You, ha you have to be strong in your core, or you cannot be strong at your extremities. So your core is not just your abdominals, it is your, it's your back, it's your glutes, it's your quads and hamstrings, it's your center. So planks are the best exercise you can do for your core, bar none. It's, they're hard. <laughs> it works every muscle you own. You can modify it, but planks are number one, Squats, lunges, bridges, and rows. And I'll go into a little bit of details, but these are my five favorite strengthening exercises, and you could do most of that with your own body weight. Don't even need to have a ton of weight to do this. So plank, I went over that already. That's a full body exercise. You can modify it. You can do it on your knees. You can do it in a uh, tall plank on your hands. You could do it on elbow plank which is actually harder, I think, elbow, and you're getting your whole body. You don't have to do 150, 200 crunches. In fact, you shouldn't. And that, that actually doesn't even work the right muscles of your core. Like, it works the movers of your core and not the stabilizers, okay? Squats are a great one. And form is important, and you may have issues with your knees, but here's a little piece of information for you. And we tend to be stronger on the front side of our bodies, right? So we're stronger in our quads maybe and a little weaker in our glutes and hamstrings. So quads are good, however, or squats, excuse me, you have to shift your weight back and make sure that your knees are lined up over your toes and you're sitting back. And the lower you go, the more you're gonna differentiate between your quads. If you stay up here, you're working your quads. Well, those are already strong as runners. If you go deeper you, and really push on the way up, you're gonna work your glutes and hamstrings. Now, runners tend to be tight in their hip flexors, and they tend to be weaker in their glutes and hamstrings. So if you stretch the, glute, the hip flexors, and you strengthen glutes and hamstrings, you get faster, mm -hmm. because you can turn over quicker, and you have better push-off power. Mm -hmm. So that's the rationale behind that, okay? Lunges is another phenomenal exercise, okay? Lunges work those glutes and hamstrings. They also work single leg, right? We spend a, well, whether or not you walk fast or you run, you spend some time on one leg, right? <laughs> or none. However, runners need to have, they need to have what we call lateral control of your hip. You have to be able to stabilize on that one leg or that happens. Every time you run, you're gonna end up hurting your hip if you don't have good, could, did everybody see that? Okay, so lunges are good and single leg balance work is good for runners. Okay, so there's a couple types of lunges. Single leg um, strength is good for runners. Bowler's lunge, this one's fun. I learned this one when I, has anybody done Pio? I love Pio. <laughs> Shailene, <laughs> if that that she is the reason why I'm a coach, and she's the reason why I'm not injured anymore as a runner, <laughs> because Pio is the best. What is that? It is a it's an it's a beach body program. Okay. It's strength, stretch, flexibility. Like it's just the the bomb.com <laughs> for runners. Pilates and yoga together. Huh? Yes, Pilates, Pilates and, yoga and yoga together. So you move. You, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you don't hold many poses. It's hard. <laughs> it's your own body weight, and you do it at home. So a bowler's lunge is fun. It's called Pio, because you basically stick out 
you stick one leg out and you go down and up and you work your lateral hip, you work your booty, the side of your booty. And that muscle is, is again, super important for runners. It's called your gluteus medius. You gotta have that for good strength when you're, when you're a runner. Bridges, if you have issues with your knees, some of us do, and you can't squat or lunge. Does everybody know what a bridge is? Yeah. If you're laying on the ground, your knees are bent, and you lift up your butt. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, yeah. Yeah. What's it called? Bridge pose. Bridge pose okay. from yoga. So that's a, we call it the squat free booty. Did I say that already? <laughs> because you're going to get those same muscles, your glutes and hamstrings, and you save your knees. And then rows, this is a little bit of the PT in me, I think. We are so forward with our life that, again, everything on the front is tight, everything on the back is stretched out and weak. And when we run, we want to have good posture, we want to have good lung excursion, a diaphragm excursion, we want to have good postural strength. So a row, you guys know you can do it with bands, you can do it with weights, you can do it with the machine. Rowing is good for your strength of your postural muscles. Okay, now we're gonna talk about stretching. Does anybody have questions so far? You're like a phenomenal audience. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, so stretching, again, an area, a good area that I, one I like to talk about. One I didn't do, especially trying to run when my kids were little, because I just wanted to get the mileage in. <laughs> I don't have time to stretch. And so then what happens? you get injured. Mm -hmm. So that third marathon that I trained for, a week before the race, I, on dumb five mile run, my hamstring pulled mm -hmm. and I couldn't complete it. Like that's terrible. Mm -hmm. So then I found Pio. <laughs> <laughs> and then at, a year later, I ran a marathon without injury. So it takes time, but you have to stretch and strengthen. You have to. So here we go. And now here's the little, this is going to require a little bit of improvisation. I have a, a great guide that I, I'll show you guys when we're done. I, my husband and I created this. It's a stretching to prevent injuries guide. It's available on our website. I wanted you to be able to just sign up for it here, but we're having trouble with the internet. You, you all will get a copy of this if you'll give me your email address. And it's from a PT. <laughs> It's from a runner, but it's all of these stretch, strengthening exercises I'm going to share with you. It's the pictures. It's a little anatomy because that's, you know, I'm a nerd like that. <laughs> and you have to know about the muscles if you're going to know how to stretch them safely. And there's pictures, and it talks about some philosophy. So we'll get that to you guys. You may have to, you know, go home or, or give us your email address, but you can have that easily to print off and keep. Okay. But basically, there are two types of stretching. There's dynamic stretching and static stretching. Dynamic stretching we should do before. So dynamic means it's movement-based. And again, these are in this stretching guide. Um, walking lunges are good. Like maybe you pick an area that's like 50 feet long and you lunge and you walk back and forth. Cherry pickers is kind of like a running jump. Um, squatting, you could do that. It would be a dynamic in, in place. Um, Frankenstein's, I don't know, do you guys know what that is? It's, it's walking with straight legs <laughs> for your hamstrings. Um, heel walking, so just getting your calves loosened up, just walking on your heels. And karaoke? No, football. Okay, so there you have it. And that, again, it's in the stretching guide for you. Static stretching should be done when you're done. Static stretching is best when you're warm and it's a low, low, gentle stretch. You hold them for up to two minutes to get the lengthening to occur. So there you have it. Basically, the major muscles of the lower body, we're gonna make sure you guys all get your copy of your stretching guide. Hip flexor is important to stretch for runners. Glutes, hamstrings, quads, IT band, gastrox. And I just kind of went through a little bit of the different variations too. I feel like I'm talking a long time, you guys. But there's lots of different ways to safely stretch and you'll have it all in your packet. Gastroxoleus. So what I want to do just briefly at the end is 
put on my third hat, which is my health and fitness coaching. So my husband has his experience with training our runners. So if anybody is interested in talking to us specifically about running plans or personalized training, I'll take your email addresses at the end. We can talk to you about that. If you're interested in health and fitness coaching, that is what I can help you with tonight. Shakeology is the meal replacement shake put out by Beachbody. Does anybody heard of it? Anybody tried it? So it has, it's my breakfast, and I won't give you all the details because we talked long already, but basically this is why I drink it. <laughs> it makes me feel good. It has all the fuel I need as a runner, and as a mom, and as a woman, and as a person, and it has all those things I told you what runners need. <laughs> okay. The other thing, and I have some of this stuff here too, the other tool that I use every now and then when I need to get back on track, when I have, um, people use it before vacations, people use it after vacations. <laughs> <laughs> People use it before they start a new fitness program. It really is, this three-day refresh is a three-day cleanse of, of clean eating. Like, you're gonna drink a lot of water, you're gonna drink some shakes, you're not gonna eat any meat, because all of your protein is in your shakes, and you're gonna eat lots of veggies. <laughs> and the average weight loss for a three-day refresh is about five pounds. It's kind of fun because you can see really quick results. It's not easy, but you can do anything for three days. And you really like, that's how I kicked coffee creamer. It's the sugar. It's the sugar. So the other, just, I'll just take a few more minutes. So the other, the other tools that I use as a runner are our performance line, and there's a few important ones or that would be appropriate for us. There's a pre-workout. I actually made it back there, but I don't know. It's not that well shaken up anymore. It's the yellow cups back okay. there. Oh. We might have to stir it or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a citrus flavor. I just wanted you guys to be able to try it. You take it before. You take it before a race, and it really works well. I can tell you that. You feel like a, a little rush from it. There's a during workout. Uh, electrolyte replacement, that would be hydrate, instead of Gatorade, <laughs> because that has a lot of artificial stuff in it. And then there's a Recover product I use, that's like a, a very high protein, a high quality protein um, replacement, kind of for like when I'm lifting hard, or it would be great for after a long run. So I have information on those. Beachbody On Demand, I t do you love it? I should let you talk about it. Oh. <laughs> Why do you size? That's yes. Like, yes. With Shanti. Yes. Dance, like work out. Um, and I can do it on my iPhone if I'm traveling or on my computer if yeah. someone else is watching the TV. Mm -hmm. the mom, that's a mom talking to you. <laughs> trying to get her workout in at home, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So I already talked to you guys a little bit. You've heard like Pio is my love. But I've done a ton of other at-home workouts. Now, Size is a, is a fun Shanti dance one. He's got Insanity, Crazy Max, 30. There's a lot of... Beachbody On Demand is literally hundreds of different workout programs. All modification, all fitness levels can do it. You can stream it on your device, on your TV, on your laptop. You can take it when you travel. It's like there's no excuse not to stretch, strength, and cross-train. And, or if you can't run because it's snowing, you can do something. You know, <laughs> it'll make you faster. Okay, so that's basically, that's basically it, you guys. We believe that if you believe you can, you're halfway there. So we're going to have to kind of modify a little bit. Basically, I have that stretching guide that I want to be able to give you guys. I'll need your email addresses for that, and we'll sign you up, and it'll come to your email. If you want to talk to us about running coaching, We'll hang around for that. We can get your, I have some flyers. And then also the health and fitness coaching. That I prefer to develop a relationship with you first too. So we'll give emails. And I'm on Facebook. You can find Team Nisa on Facebook and follow our page. And if there's any questions, I'll take them now or you can shop and we're going to hang around. So 
Thank you guys for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.